All right, so let's continue talking about some fun Swift malware. So right now I'm looking at this blog post by 701. So shout out to Phil Stokes on this one. This is for certain malware that was attributed to North Korea from last year. What's interesting is this sentence or this part of the sentence right here takes the URL hardcoded in the, this binary as a launch argument. So what's cool about that is that we can explore how this is handled by Swift. So that's what we're going to do. So here goes the sample. But first, I think it's going to be fun to talk a little bit about some anti-analysis that might trip you up while you're debugging samples. So this is an example of some anti-debugging logic built into this binary. So let's take a look at how this works. So we do see this DL thin call. So if we take a look at what that is, the old sim, this returns the address of a symbol and the symbol is passed in as the second argument, right? So this would be an X1, we're looking at arm. And it also accepts an argument here in X0 for the handle. And if we look closely, we'll see that negative two is passed into the first argument for x0 here, and that relates to our TLD default. So this is just then all macro images in the process are searched in the order they were loaded. So that has to do with how it searches for the address. Okay, so this is gonna return the address of whatever was passed into this argument, which is an x1. So if we go back, we'll see what's passed in is fork. So this is going to return the address of fork. So it returns fork. Okay. Ooh, let me actually put that here. Okay, cool. So now this instruction DLR is going to branch and link to register. So this is going to actually execute and then we're gonna return whatever fork returns into W0 in this case. So executes fork and return to X0 or W0 for a 32 bit value. So this is a check for whatever was returned by fork. If we go and look up how fork works, so man fork, so this creates a new process and let's look at what it returns returns a value of zero to the child process and returns the process ID of the child process to the parent process. So if it's checking for zero, it's expecting to be the child process. But if we're debugging this, we're still going to be debugging the parent process if we don't account for this fork. So this is going to prevent debugging because if you're if it doesn't return the right value and you're debugging the parent you'll end up going here and then branching to the exit function which will then exit this binary okay so anti-analysis let's continue i want to focus on this because i think it's pretty cool it allows us to talk a little bit about Swift arrays, or in this case, Swift contiguous arrays. So we have this branch and link instruction that basically runs this getter method for command line dot arguments. We can look that up here. So accessing arguments. So this command line enum, command line arguments for the current process, we can use this dot arguments to be able to get an array that provides access to the program's command line arguments. And this returns an array of Swift strings. So when you branch and link to that, X0 is going to have the array of arguments that are Swift strings. So X0 after this branch is our array. Now, a couple things here that are pretty interesting to cover. So this load instruction is going to get an offset of this array. So it's going to go into the array 
and get an offset at plus 0x10, so hex 10, 16 bytes from the beginning of the array, and it's going to load that value into x8. Then this value is going to be compared against x2. So this looks like a comparison to see how many arguments are inside of this arg array. So how many arguments were passed to this binary. So we have a compare. So compare arg array count, or better known as argc. So we're going to confirm that that's how that works. Then we have this b.low. So if it's lower than that value, I'm going to branch here, and that just exits. So it's checking against that. And you can actually see that in the decompilation. So if this value that is an offset of the arg array plus 0x10, 16 bytes, is less than 2, then we do this trap, which basically quits. OK. So we need to see what this does. We do know that this returns an arg array. So we can just kind of rename this while we're doing this. And we have another two things here, different offsets that are being assigned to different values. Now, let's take a look at that. So we have 0x30, right? So this offset of the arg array is being loaded into x8 and x0. And when we have two registers that we're loading up like this, or this LDP instruction, so load pair of registers, what you don't see is that 0x30 is being moved into x8, and then 8 bytes from there is being moved into x0. So that's why when you see over here, you'll see that there's a reference to the 0x38. So we're moving 64 bits from this and then an additional 64 bits for our two registers. So x0 in this case is going to be equal to plus 0x38, which is that R gray and that offset. Cool. And then we're going to store, right? So we get this URL uh, variable that gets loaded into x21 then the address of that variable, we're going to store the values that we got from this address and the value that's in x0, and it's going to be put into these two references. So this is where zero, x0 plus 0x30 is going to be set as the URL variable. So our array plus 0x30 will be equal to URL. So let's just put it like this for fun. So how does that work? And what is this 0x30? How does it get the count from here? This is all related to Swift contiguous arrays. So I got an example to kind of cover this, which I think will be fun to look at. So let's look at Swift command line. And I'm going to pass in two um, arguments. And then we're going to be able to see this branch to the argument array getter. And we're going to be able to go in there and see the different offsets and what they contain. So and then we're going to run. Now, if we disassemble this, we can see. I wrote this up really quickly. This is just some code to show how you can go through an argument array. So we have this call to the same thing that we see inside of this malware sample, uh, static command line dot arguments dot getter. It's right here. Then it shows how it returns a Swift array for Swift strings. So we have this branch and link instruction at this address. So we can copy that. And then we can continue running this. Let's make this smaller. OK. So let's just create a breakpoint. Continue to that breakpoint. 
now we're inside of this instruction we're about to branch to this instruction so we're going to click next to skip over it so we can just worry about the return value that's going to be an x0 okay so we now have called that command line dot arguments dot getter method so the array of arguments should be at x0 so we can check that so x0 has this contiguous array storage at this address so let's take a look at the contents of this address so x8 wg okay going back the first thing that was checked was the count which we assume to be the count based on the comparison to two, right? So at the start of this arg array, we have an offset of zero X 10, so 16 bytes. We can see what value is there by looking at that inside of this memory location for this arg array. So this is the start. And just to make it easy to see, this is the start of this arg array that we're going based on this object, this contiguous array storage. If you add plus 10 X, you'll get here. And this shows a three, which makes sense because we passed two arguments to this arg array. And the first element of this arg array is going to be the binary itself. The first, the second element is gonna be the first argument that you pass, which in this, pay, this case, I passed cloud. So if we look at this, we do the same calculation that we see in the binary, plus 0x10. Oop. So I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> so here we go. The start of the arg array plus 0x10, we'll see we get the value of 3. So we have three elements inside of this arg array of Swift strings. Okay, so going back, let's just repeat this command. Now we want to mimic what we saw here to understand what this grabs, 0x30. So this is the start of our arg array. This is plus 10, plus 20, plus 30. So what is this up here? So this is referencing a large switch string that is at the size of 1a. This is going to be the argv0, so the first element of this arg array. And for that, we need to calculate the um, nibble for this, which is going to be 0x20. And I'm just going to show what this looks like really quickly. And this would be our first arg inside of this arg array, which is the binary itself that I'm debugging at this point, Swift command. And that is at 0x20. So 10, 0x10 from there is going to be the second element of this arg array. And if it's matching properly, this should be cloud, since that's the first thing I passed to this binary. Okay, so now let's take a look at that. So we have this value, which is that first argument that was passed in. And if we look at that, this is at 0x30. We'll see it does match cloud. So we can also look at this based on the calculation that we did before, or that was inside of the binary that we're debugging or analyzing at this point. We have the start of the arg array plus 0x30. So if we do that same thing, plus 0x30 here, we'll see we get the argument for cloud, which was the first thing that I was passed in. So this 0x30, this value ends up being the first element that was passed in to this arg array not the binary itself but the argument and that makes sense based on this right here so this 
binary takes the URL hard coded in the this binary as a launch argument. So it grabs that and does whatever it needs to do, and it sets it as the URL. So we can see that here, it gets that value from this offset of this arg array. It's loaded into x8, and then that's stored here. So this ends up being the arg v1 passed in when executed just to finish our note there. All right. Awesome. That's it for this video.